Google's biggest leak ever just occurred over the weekend, and everybody in the SEO industry is talking about this right now. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what seem to be the biggest takeaways from this leak. What? My name is Frank, I'm the founder of Saga Pixel. We are a digital marketing firm. If you wanna learn more about SEO, make sure you hit subscribe. Okay, so let's get into this. To start off, all of this comes from internal documents for Google Search's Content Warehouse API. This isn't like what happened with the index last year where the entire code base leaked. It's also important to note that this, these aren't actual ranking factors. This is all just data that Google is collecting about Google Search and Chrome users, which we all suspect they are actually using as ranking factors. It's also worth noting that there are no weights associated with any of this. We don't know how big of a factor any of these things are, or even if they are a factor at all. But given how so much of it correlates with very strong suspicions that we've all had for years at this point, we're pretty sure that they are factors. So let's get into some of the big points. Number one is that there are over 14,000 different features in this document. Now, for many years, there's been this whole, Google has 200 plus ranking factors that's been floating around the internet. It's ballooned to well over 14,000 at this point. Number two, Google does have some sort of site-wide authority quality score. Now, despite the fact that they've said tons of times that they don't have anything like quote unquote domain authority, that was a half truth. Truth was that they weren't using Moz's domain authority, but there are signals that they use to determine the overall authoritativeness of an entire domain. They call it the site authority score. Number three, they use clicks in the rankings of individual websites, or at the very least, they are collecting data about them and the length of those clicks. This means that Google is paying attention to whether Google users, in particular Chrome users, are clicking over to a website and the length of those clicks. Meaning, are they spending a few seconds and going back to Google search, or are they spending a considerable amount of time on the website after they perform the search? I've long believed that this is something that Google is paying attention to, and that they promote and demote websites that seem to fulfill the search intent of people that are using Google. Next, Google Chrome is collecting data about users, and they use this data in the search algorithms. If people seem to like your website, you rank better. If they seem to not like your website, your rankings are going down. Next, the traffic that goes to a website impacts the power of the backlinks that that website is providing to other websites. In other words, a lot of those guest posts that people are doing that no one ever sees, that nobody ever reads, odds are they're not passing any sort of value over to any of the websites that are paying for those backlinks. On the other hand, getting a backlink from an article that lots of people are reading is going to be beneficial. Even if the website doesn't have, quote unquote, a lot of page rank to pass over to your website. Next, Google is paying attention to anger text spam. So whether someone is doing a negative SEO attack on you, or if you're doing a ton of link building using the same anchor text, odds are it's all getting ignored and it's either something to not worry about or not to do. When a new page gets published on your website and Google first indexes it and it hasn't yet had enough time to calculate page rank for that specific page, your homepage's page rank serves as a proxy. So even if you're not trying to get your homepage to rank for anything, there is a benefit to having backlinks going to your homepage. Next, Google is paying attention to whether your website has a lot of video content or not. Now, I'm not sure what this really means, but we recommend to our clients that they have video content on their blogs. And there are, there are implications to that, which I personally am going to be very interested in finding out. Because if we're gonna recommend this as a strategy to our clients, I wanna make sure that I know what all of the implications are. Next, there's a keyword stuffing score. Now, I am really interested in what this looks like and how it works, because I still do see keyword stuffed landing pages, in particular in local SEO, doing well in organic search. So, I don't know. Next, as we all suspected, Google has a system to determine how on topic a new page on your website is in the context of the rural website. Now, we don't know how this translates into the real world. Like, for example, the Saga Pixel blog is largely about digital marketing. Um, if we were to put up an article about email marketing, is that considered to be relevant or not? We don't do email marketing, really have barely ever written about it. Is that considered on topic or off topic? I'm not sure. Regardless, I'm sure I'm not alone in 
wanting to see them maybe dial that up a little bit because Forbes should not be answering questions about health and other non-financial related topics, but it does. And lastly, and this one surprised me a lot, Google considers the last 20 revisions to your page in its rankings, which makes me think that the whole practice of earning a whole bunch of backlinks to a specific page and then redirecting it to yet another page probably has very little value if the content is substantially different. What we're gonna do with outdated content in the future is gonna have to take this into consideration. Now, I'm sure that over time, a lot more factors are gonna come out as we have a little bit more time with this document. And I'm really interested in hearing what you are having, what you're taking away from all of this and anything new that has come out. Also, please talk about that in the comments. I'll be checking them. One, two, three.